to think of America as the land of the free, but this year, over half of our state legislature introduced laws discriminating against LGBTQ people. Unfortunately, making laws that target queer people isn't new, it's actually an American tradition. I'll explain in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? few years, Republican politicians have basically declared war on LGBTQ Americans. This includes everything from Florida's Don't Say Gay bill to Arizona trying to ban books that depict homosexuality to Texas asking private citizens to report the parents of trans kids for child abuse. Now, I hate even saying those things. It feels like they're pulled off of something called Satan's to-do list. <laughs> it's the same list that includes make eye drops and super glue bottles look exactly the same and... <laughs> Make all Walgreens stores play Chumba Wumba. Because, because our government isn't just reflecting American homophobia, they're also creating it. And it's happened before. The FBI and the federal government have a long history of monitoring, outing, and criminalizing queer Americans. So let's go back to the 1930s to give you an idea how long ago that was. It was literally when they invented sliced bread. That's true. Before that, you had to eat the whole loaf like corn on the cob. Now, in 1936, a boy named Charles Matson was kidnapped and eventually killed. It was tragic, and the case was all over the news. The FBI was under a lot of pressure to solve it. Then, a random informant told the FBI that the crime looked like it had been done by a sexual deviant or sexual pervert. Now, those were euphemisms they used back then for gay people. Like how now, when someone is pregnant, we say they have a bun in the oven. Or when they're unemployed, we say they're an influencer. Now... <laughs> The FBI never solved Matson's kidnapping and never had any actual evidence that a gay man was involved. But by spreading the rumor that Matson was kidnapped by a gay man, they started a campaign of homophobia that still echoes today. It's worth mentioning that in those days, the FBI was headed by J. Edgar Hoover, who many historians believe was a closeted gay man. Now, was Hoover straight and making homophobic laws that reflected the culture around him? Was he gay and motivated by internalized homophobia? Did the J stand for jingles? <laughs> those are things we will never know for sure. The only thing we do know is straight or gay, jingles was a bitch. <laughs> so... <laughs> the FBI... The FBI secretly started monitoring gay people and began a campaign to make Americans believe that queer people were preying on children and, even weirder, working as spies for the Soviet Union, which is ridiculous. The Soviet Union didn't have time to hire gay people. They were too busy giving steroids to athletes. But the fear-mongering worked. In 1950, Congress held a hearing called Homosexuals in Government. And shortly after that, J. Edgar Hoover issued a memo creating an FBI file to report any, quote, sexual deviates who worked for the government, which is horrifying. The only time it's okay to keep a list of gay people is if you're Santa Claus trying to remember who gets Patty Lapone tickets. <laughs> Hoover's memo was the start of something called the Lavender Scare, which I wish was a punk band led by Grimace, but <laughs> instead, it was a period in American history when a group of officials led by Senator Joseph McCarthy claimed the government had been infiltrated by queer people who had been blackmailed to become spies and communists. And I know that sounds like something a person in a tinfoil hat would scream outside of TJ Maxx, but here's the thing. It worked. In 1953, President Eisenhower executed Executive Order 10450, banning gay people from working for the government or its contractors. And countless employees who were gay or suspected of being gay lost their jobs. That's an insane reason to be fired. This is America. We only fire people for good reasons, like being pregnant. <laughs> well, the Lavender Scare was a wonderful idea, and it led to great things. Just kidding. It was very bad, and it sucked, and it ended in tragedy. Less than two months after that executive order, the son of a Democratic U.S. senator named Lester Hunt was arrested on what they called morals charges, which was code for, we think he's gay. Republican politicians threatened to out Hunt's son unless the senator resigned, but he didn't resign. Instead, the senator killed himself because... That's what happens when politicians demonize the queer community. People get hurt and people get killed, which brings us back to today. In the 1930s, homophobia and transphobia was a secret government operation. Now, state legislatures are doing it right out in the open. And 
They're using the same tactics, accusing queer people of hurting children and having secret agendas. When the only agenda queer people have is to be left alone and to make sure a league of their own gets a season two. <laughs> got it. Got to renew it. You have to. But at the end of the day, these bills aren't really about LGBTQ people. They're about politicians inciting bigotry. Politicians are trying to turn LGBTQ people into a fake enemy for you to be scared of, and then they're saying, vote for me and I'll protect you from that enemy I just made up. And this is well-worn, lazy territory, and it's how they get votes. Politicians have tried to make voters afraid of queer people, black people, Latinx people, Muslim people, and now they're back to queer people. Do not fall for it. If you do, you're dumber than a guy eating bread like corn on the cob. This has been How Did We Get Here?